Bill, Syl, thank you so much for joining me for what sadly will be the penultimate Zoom room of the year. We'll be back later in the month or next month with the uh, Champions Day at Ascot, but it is Ledger Meeting, the Saturday of Donny. For me, what keeps developing into the best classic of the year. Look at this for a race. We've got Pile Driver, the 5 2 favourite with us at Star Sports. Santiago is a winner at Royal Ascot. Huckham, another winner at Royal Ascot, the most progressive three year old out there, other than maybe Pile Driver. And Bill, I know you like Joseph's Calif Galileo Chrome. English King, one of the most talked about horses earlier in the year. We could go on and on. I'm going to go to you, Sylv. Tell me if you could ride one, you'd ride Power Driver. Yes, and I was very impressed with the way he did last time, Power Driver. And, and uh, I think he's a good, it's a good three-year-old colt. And, uh, you know, and I do like the way he went his races. And I think if he switched himself off in that race, and he's a very, very good contender, and I can see him there fight for the finish. Will he stay, Bill? Yeah, that's the big question. Um, he should be fine on the ground. The ground looks like it'll be quick. Um, it's just a stamina thing with him. I think he's a brilliant horse on his day. It's whether the one mile six will catch him out. He didn't look like a non-stayer. Um, there are question marks over um, Harbour Watch's ability to produce stayers, but uh, he's, he's looked pretty good over a mile and a half. He sets the bar pretty high. You mentioned, I, I, I do like Joseph's horse. I was, I was very taken with Gal Galileo Chrome. Um, keeps winning, uh, won over close to this trip last time, uh, handles all sorts of ground. Um, he, he, he would get the vote for me. Uh, he, he's drawn 12 or 12, which makes it slightly harder, but um, he'll be switched off, played late. I think he's very good. No, I'm sick of a pile driver. I've backed him all three occasions this season, and uh, I'd like to think you'll round off the year for William Yeo. Delighted to see William Yeo have a, a runner of such prestige in a race like this. Right, the three o'clock, the undercard, shall we say, to this race is the Park Stakes over seven furlongs. The evergreen Lamato lightly campaigned. He won the Criterion early in the season, comes here as an eight-year-old. He won this race five years ago. Can you imagine if I said to you five years ago, he'd be coming back here as five to two favourite. What a horse to own. One master, she's got one more outing on her trip to hopefully make a famous classic in the uh, Le Foray later in the year in France. Whittacher, who looks like he's had a tough campaign, he'd be the one I'd massively be looking to take on at 9-2. And Sylv, you ride, ride Shine So Bright, who was uh, fourth in the race last year. I remember being slightly disappointed when he came third at Epsom behind Safe Voyage. and beginning to think that was quite a good run, and he'd have every chance here, wouldn't he? He had, and I still felt he wasn't 100% fit that day you know I thought was would be an improvement from the run and uh, obviously has been an improvement we're very happy with him at home and when you come back a bit deep in his form he's a horse he has beat group one horses like Lorraine you know over seven he made all the run and you know he, he won by a small margin but if he hit his form back and if he gets the ground I think he could be very competitive in that race and I do like the, the ride I have, and then I wouldn't swap him for another one. Yeah, Bill, dead eight runners, 14 to one each way against a few horses for me that have had pretty tough campaigns of breathtaking look, Wichita, et cetera. I thought he could hit the frame. Yeah, I could do. Um, I think, um, again, it's a ground thing. The, the, the better the ground, the better his chances. It looks like it's going to be decent ground. Uh, Lamato sets the bar pretty high. I mean, yeah. he has been on the go a lot, but he looked as good as ever on his reappearance. Um, seven furlongs, fast ground is a good thing for him. Um, if it does get quick, I wonder whether one master will run. Um, not the, both the three year olds, Molotham, Wichita, um, are take honorable. Uh, I agree. There could be a surprise here. I, I thought one that could go well at a big price, it, it looks pretty exposed, is Urban Icon. Um, I, I like the horse a lot. I, I just thought seven furlongs fast ground was definitely worth a try with him. Um, he's had some pretty tough tasks in handicaps. And if you go a couple of starts back, he was, he was a good second to prompting at Goodwood over a mile, um, carrying nine, ten. Now, when you factor the fact that prompting had eight stone four, that was a really, really good performance. Soft ground over a mile at Goodwood last time behind Century Dream was never going to be his bag. Um, but I, I think the horse is plenty talented enough and isn't far off these. And I just thought 
you know, at, at a double figure price could surprise a few. So Lamato, the obvious one, but Urban Icon to go well. Yeah, I think you've got you've got one to chase home, Lamato and so have I. So it looks like we're all in agreement. He'll he'll go very well, Lamato. But still, best of luck. A nice seat trade price. Right, right guys, now let's spin back chrono chronologically in order and go through the racing from the beginning. We'll get back to the 115. Still, that's a handicap. A URI one for Ivan Vitado called Teston. A friend of mine had a few horses with Ivan a couple of years ago who I followed quite closely. And I'm very much of the opinion he's an underrated trainer out there. And people who like course form, this test has got a nice win at Donny earlier in the season. Rated 101. Every chance in a, a very trappy affair. What can you tell us? Well, he, 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 this horse hold a good for, holds a good form in France, you know. Uh, I never rid on a horse, but um, Ivan Portard usually turn up horse in, in a great form. And, uh, you know, I just hope for, for a good day, you know. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to get the ride. He's very high rating. So... If he's, if he's been throwing the deep end, we don't know, but we will find out, you know. Phil, there looks a, a more attractive punting opportunities later in the card, should we say? Yeah, it looks really hard. I mean, Teston, still sources, interesting. I mean, he made a mockery of his marker 90 when, it, when he won first up at Donny by kind of six lengths. Yeah. Thank for that now. Uh, the ground will be fine for him, but, you know, it's whether he can cope with a mark of 101. I thought the race looked really hard. Few old favourites like Firmament, another Firmament, time. Yeah. Lock to pop in. I just thought the one down the bottom, La Trinidad, was interesting. Roger Roger Fells horse right the way down the bottom. O only a three-year-old, but um, has won at one at Donny. Uh, been unlucky last time um, in a, in a in a good race at York, and has risen dramatically. Yeah, you know, began this season I think at a mark of 65, was up to 88. But look, last time, like um, there was still a few pounds to play with and I thought that Trinidad could go well at a decent price. Yeah, consistent type, you know, one, two of six starts placed on the other two as well. So look, I'll leave you to play up in that race. I'm going to wait for some opportunities later in the card. And we'll move on to the 150, the Champagne Stakes Group 2. This looks a cracking little race. This Al Bashir, uh, I think Hamdan's won of every 10 races, he seemed to have won 11 of them on ITV this summer. And he's got another really nice looking horse in this race. And Chindit was a horse that we saw bundles of money for on debut at Donny. He's won Ascot since. Hannon Vormer in cracking, in cracking form. Still, you've not got a ride here. But, Bill, they're all there, aren't they? Devis, Company, Stands his Ground, Mujabar, really good race. Yeah, really, really good race. Um, I, I thought I thought Chindit was the one. I mean, Al Bashir was really mm -hmm. uh, on his debut, but um, you know you, you've got to take that with a pinch of salt. Potentially, he could be a superstar, but that's on the back of one run. Chindit's done it twice, and that form of that Ascot race where everything's come out one since is is phenomenal. And he, he looks a really smart type, and he would be the one for me. So Chindit. You know, Right, let's get into a race where you do have a ride, Silva. And that's the 225, the Portland Handicap. There's some fans' favourites in here that we've been talking about all summer, like some uh, Soldiers Minute, Marasville, who you've up a few times in the summer, Jawal, one of my few triumphs this summer. A race that was won by Oxted last year, went on them and won a group one. Silva, you ride Stone of Destiny, who, who's got a nice draw, drawn 18, nice lightweight, 16 to 1. Ran in a smaller field of five last time, came second. I, I just thought, you know, that run early in the season when he was sixth in the Wokium, you'd have thought a race like this was within his compass. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, this fella has been throwing the deep end, you know. He has run a couple of competitive handicaps, big handicaps, like and last time was a small field. And he turned up and he, he got beat by a better one in the day. But like they would say, with a lightweight and his back and you know, I think he come with this race with a chance. It's things going his way. Uh, there's plenty of speed in the race. He likes that to have a couple of front runners and he come and chase and the leaders and the, and the finish, you know. But uh, I, I will give his chance, you know. It looks like Andrew's horse hitting form now. He's been half win and left and right centre in the country. So, no, I'm happy to ride. And, you know, obviously got high draw, good draw for me, you know. So, no, I think he'll be competitive. Right up that rail, put him in front, just on the line. Bill, I'll give you two darts. There's 21 runners, seems fair. 
Um, yeah, well, you've got to, if you've got two darts, you've got to have a moment of madness with one of those darts. I mean, he was second to Oxted off 95 last year, having won the race off 99 the year before. Lines up here off 91, that's still been the plan. Um, he, he'll blaze the trail and, you know, this unique kind of five and a half furlong trip obviously suits him down to the ground. So he has to, has to be the kind of main play. Um, you can make a case out for so many of the others. It's, it's, it's really wide open, as you expect. Arecibo was placed last year and is a cliff horse for many, but if ever there was a race shape for him, it's this. He, he shouldn't be far away. Um, Wentworth Falls is another. I was on him last year and he flew home, but he's just a little bit higher in the handicap, which makes life a tiny bit tough for him. Um, I, 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 I probably just stick with a moment of madness really i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily um want to have have two darts in it i think he, he would be the main one for me okay let's finish in the 405 the nursery uh Sylv, you team up with martin me to ride a beautifully bred horse called lone eagle who i was there the day landed a bit of a touch at goodwood um nice race i mean mark the man the other one who's landed a couple of touches early season bill i know you're a big fan of dingle but Beautifully bred horses, Sil. What do you know about him? Uh, well, I only, I only know him because I have seen him run a few times. But, uh, you know, he had two stars and, you know, he's done nothing wrong. Like, you know, it's a beautiful bread, beautiful breeding. And uh, Martin Mead is very shrewd, you know, when it comes to big meetings. And, you know, on a nursery like that, probably he's got a two-way chance, you know. Yeah, there's a lot you can make a case for. Look at Lamb Gosden's Lost in Space is finally began to get the fear of things. He's won last twice. Bill, have you played already or will you? Is this your sort of race, these two-year-olds? Well, I mean, it's, it's only the eight runners so and, and it looks as trappy as, as anything. I yeah. mean, they're really well-bred types, like we say, like Lone Eagle and, and, and Legend of Dubai. It's, it's weird having like a Galileo tra trained by Martin Mead and having a um, having a Roger Vary and Jabawi. It just, it, it's, you know, it's all over the shop in terms of who's got, got some of these horses now. Um, I, I, you mentioned Dingle. I, I, I just like the horse Dingle. I think he's he's um, improving. Um, he kind of caught my eye at York um, when he was third to, to Naval Crown. That was good form, and then obviously got the job done at Kempton earlier this week. Well, well, hopefully he'll he'll reappear again. I mean, life's a bit tougher now um, in handicaps off a mark of eighty six, and, and and whether he's good enough to to give weight to horses down the bottom. I mean, there's, there's the Bindi of, of William Haggis is, um, that's yet to show her true colours. I mean, she's by Frankel. She could be anything. But no, I'd, I, I'd stick with Dingle, but I'd tread carefully in this race. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, Syl, thanks so much for your time. I know you've got to get to the track, but good luck with Shine So Bright and Lone Eagle. You've got some cracking rides on the Saturday of Johnny, the Ledger's Day. Bill, thanks for your time as always. And look, it's back some winners. We've got one more to go, Champions Day, and that it would have been a bit of fantastic summer.